Okay, guys, welcome. Welcome. We have a great class today. Um, today, we're also going to be referencing this chart. If everybody has the chart, I just want to make sure everybody has this chart. This is a map of consciousness. We're just going to, we're going to review it as we go through the class, just to give you guys a visual list. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Good. If you can sit in the back, just come closer. We're not yelling Moroccan tonight. We're going, <laughs> we need you Shuvadat. So if you can't hear me, please sit closer. Everybody can hear me in Bizrat Hashem and in the Facebook world, great. All right, so today's class is titled How to Stop Chasing and Start Attracting. Okay, this is, we're going to talk a little bit about the law of attraction. How do we get things? What's the Torah's way of getting things closer to us? What's stopping us from getting things closer to us? What blockages do we have? Uh, believe it or not, a lot of the things that you think about, it's pretty much opposite from the outside world. You know, this concept of in the outside world, get rich or die trying. It's not really the Torah world. The concept in the outside world where they tell you, I'll breathe when I make a deal, the Torah tells you, no, first you need to breathe, then, you, then the deal will come to you. It's pretty much things come to us when we're in a very good conscious state. When we're running after things, when we're running f- things to be happy, etc., that means we're really not in a good consciousness state. And this is just to reference this chart here. If you're going to see anything above 200 on, a, on, a, on an energy level... Mm-hmm. It's things come to you. Anything below 200 is when we're sake of desire, seeking, etc. This is where I want to reference this. The good thing about this chart is basically this chart tells you what, where you're holding and the energy you're holding. Remember, everything, everything in life, God constantly shows us either we're attracting or we're pushing away. Many times I deal with singles all the time. And they want to attract Leah, but they're dating Christina. And that doesn't really work. Like you can't date Christina and attract Leah, if you know what I mean. So many times the, the concept in, in that we, we often hear is when this happened, I'll do this. Or when I, this happened, I'll start dating these kind of girls. Or when this happened, I'll give more charity. When I make a million dollars, I'll give more charity. When I do this, already that it's already a losing mindset. Because then you're waiting for a condition to happen in order for you to do something. I'll be happy when the deal goes through. Um, I'll celebrate when this happens. Torah is telling you the opposite. Faith it till you make it. Faith it till you make it. That means adapt the feeling before like you almost already have it. And this concept we're going to talk about is very, very deep. It's all based on Torah Torah sources where it's unlike, like I said, the law of attraction or sometimes... If you picture a certain girl to come into your life, if I picture her enough, 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 she'll come into my ha- life. Or I picture a guy, or I picture this um, a, a million dollar check to come into me, etc. I'm going to envision, envision to come to me. That I, I've not seen a Torah source for that. Now, when you adapt the consciousness of simcha, love, mercy, things come to you instead of you coming to them. So obviously, there's some things that we do that sabotage our blessings. And our sages tell us very quickly. Rabbi Nachman says it black and white. He says that when a person, when a person has joy, kindness, salvation, and success are drawn to him. Does not say he goes after them. Kindness, success, and salvation are drawn to him. Thus a person who attains joy will succeed in everything he does. He will have abundance in everything and a good outcome. So you could see what the Torah's message, once you hit that state of gratitude, of simcha, you don't really have to do much. Things come to you. My zivug came to my house. My opportunities maybe all came to my house because there's a specific formula you can, that you have. That means you have to already f- attract that situation in your mind. You have to feel like it's good enough whether I have it or not. Surrender the outcome and you see how many things come to us. And you see this many times where people can't have children. And next thing you know, they adopt a child. And next thing you know, they get pregnant. Like, what, what, what happens? What, what happened? All of a sudden, you stopped worrying. You stopped worrying about it. And all of a sudden, it came to you. Things that block us from receiving are obviously worrying, fear. All of these are very low consciousness. These are things that are at a very low conscious level. And when we fall be, below our creator, before our, our, our spiritual morale, then we start using things to depend Unhappiness, And this is, you can see Florida, specifically, for example, we, we, we said a class the other day that 
Gemara, famous Gemara, Gemara Sota says, anybody who seeks his eyes on what is not his is denied of what he seeks and what he does have is taken away from him. So that's a very strong line. So already, if I am not, if already, if I look at another person's possessions, if I have an evil eye, if I have a jealous eye, not only am I not going to get what I want, forget the law of attraction, whatever you do have, it's not going to stay with you. So you could see there's certain things that you have to be careful because when we're not in a good mindset, all we do is look elsewhere and we see everybody else having this. And again, it's not to feel bad about this, it's just to understand why am I doing this? Why am I constantly? Why am I waking up with the certain patterns? We've also spoken about that in order for you to get real results, you need to have a morning ritual in order for you to manifest and let go of negative belief systems. It's very important. You, you, there's n- very little success that you're going to get by just, things don't happen by chance, things happen by change. So if we're waiting for, oh, I just want to wake up, I know there's going to be a good day happening. No, we have to get ourselves to an abundant mindset and abundance comes. It just doesn't happen just like that. It doesn't things, it's not a stimulus package. It's an energy package. Do you understand? So what we have to really work on is letting go, one of the things that I work on with people, letting go of false belief systems, letting go of limited limited belief systems. And when you have a good morning ritual, the more you let go of other things, automatically you rise up, and then you actually get more things in life that you would have never even imagined. Okay? This is why, if you see see the chart, anytime, for example, if 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 I'm living in fear, okay? What am I attracting? I'm always attracting anxiety. I'm always going to get anxiety. And my whole life is going to be very controlling. You know, for example, people that have low self-esteem or they'll get into a relationship where they're all of a sudden, they, they feel like, you know, they have a fear that that person will leave them or they have a peer, fear that that person's not going to be with them. What are they going to do? They're going to double their efforts by trying to control them, being more needy. And actually what they're doing is chasing them away. But when you're, when you're in a good conscious state, you recognize when you have love, you give people space. The more you love somebody, the more space you give them. It's not about a control thing. It's about a space thing. You respect the person, you give them space, you're not worried about if they're going to be with you, if they're not going to be with you. That's up to Hashem. I just have to align myself to get there. Remember. Ultimately, what we're really doing here is we're really optimizing our mazal. Our mazal is like a, like a GPS. It's a spiritual guide. You understand? We can, people have mazal, but the mazal, it strengthens or it can get weak. It doesn't work on automatic. You, your mazal is not like a DNA. Your mazal can get better, and your mazal can also, God, God forbid, li, li, lessen it. By the more sin we do, the more away we are from our Creator, our mazal does not have the same potency as if you're in your spiritual sense. So everybody talks about mazal, mazal, mazal. This is something that you need to work on. A mazal is like a muscle. The more you work it, the more it works for you. And ultimately, your mazal is not there to make you a billionaire, etc. Your mazal is there to get you into your maximum potential that you were destined into this world. You understand? That is really the purpose of a mazal. It's your guardian angel to get you where you're supposed to get to in your life where you're, where you're going to be happy, fulfilled, etc. But if we don't pay attention to, the, to our mazal, which is our guardian angel, it's like taking the batteries out of the GPS and you don't know where you're going. And this is the problem. So we have to, we have to elevate our mazal. The ways to do that is through prayer, faith, joy, positive things basically strengthen your mazal, negative things weaken your mazal, and then you're not able to see anything clearly. The problem with not having, uh, the, you, with your mazal is not working for you, you're not able to see things clearly. And that's really the, the biggest problem today is not knowing what decision to make. You know, always being in brain fog. Should I do this? Should I do that? How about if I do that? How about I do that? It's like all day long in our minds. When you have clarity, you can make decisions. You don't have to call 25 shatchanim and asking you how to get married. We don't even hear about those things. You don't even need one. Because you're going to be so in touch with clarity of what you want, you're going to say, what do I need a shalchi? I know what I want. You understand? That's the, that's the benefits of this work. 
But we have to recognize, very simple, we have to put the work in. And that's usually a very strong morning ritual through meditation, through prayer, through gratitude, because you're basically lining yourself up for success. It's an alignment thing. It's not a chasing thing. Once you start chasing, you're already lost. Just like an addict chasing happiness through drugs. He lost already. The minute he started running, he lost. Chasing itself is a sign of fear, is a sign of a very, very weak mindset. That already know you're making the wrong decision. So anything on the lower, for example, craving, desires, these are very low energy levels. Pride, which is 175. Again, doing, going out with people based on looking good instead of doing good. Or going into a profession that you know is not good for you, but you're doing it so you can make money at the, just to look good. This is all signs that you're not in touch with your soul. You're just trying to, you know, fill a box out there and you'll never be happy there. It's very, very important. What we need to do is we need to surrender those beliefs. The more spiritual we are, the happier we are with less, the more we attract. That's the formula. The more spiritual you are, the more you're content with less, and you actually attract more. Because you feel abundant. If you feel abundant, abundance comes to you. The more unhappy we are, the more physical we are, the less happier we get, the more we need, and the less we get. That's pretty much the formula in one-on-one. You understand? That's pretty much the basis of this class. When you enjoy, you feel abundant. You bless your creator. You're grateful. Things come to you you never even asked for. Many things in my life I didn't even ask for them. It just came. When I was in a good state, when I overcame a challenge, when I went through a difficult situation, I said, thank you, God. I don't understand you, but I believe in you. Oh, really? Blessings comes to you. And this is a very, very important message that we need to get to the world. Because we're, we're want too many vision boards and too many uh, uh, conditions to be happy or I'll be happy when I get married. I'll be, none of that works. Imagine going out with somebody, I'll be happy when I get married. Well, how about now? You think you're guaranteed happiness when you get married? Okay, then I'm happy when I get a kid. You think that's going to guarantee you happiness? I'm going to be happy when I get a, a girl and a boy. It's always something. That itself is already a problem. This is why Rab Nachman says the hardest thing is simcha. But once you get to simcha... That's the, then you can sit back and attract. Now, this does not work for spiritually. This only works for financially, f- spir- physical things. For spiritually, it's a whole different, different game. Spiritually, you do have to be aggressive. You s- do have to be aggressive. You have to tell Hashem, if I don't have a munah, I'm dead. If I don't have his bodhidut, if I don't have prayer, Hashem, I'm dead. I need it. You have to open up my heart. There you have to be extremely, extremely aggressive in demanding that you get close to your Creator no matter how much He wants to throw you out. You don't care. That's Reb Nachman's message. You cannot be rejected no matter if you feel rejected. You have to do the complete opposite. Basically, it's the opposite of what the world's doing. They're running after money. Spiritually, I'm good. I'm good. Matzah ball Friday night, I'm good. That's my spiritual... No, 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 it's not good. You understand? We have it all the way around, backwards, pretty much. Spiritually, you have to be super aggressive. You have to beg your creator for, to bring you closer to him. You have to beg him to be able to have, be to home where you don't worry anymore. You have to beg him. When he sees that you're, you're asking for that spiritually, he grants you Yeshua Dat and the other thing. Remember that, remember that relationship. Remember that relationship. If it's, if it's the other way around, it's not going to work. And I'm telling you, I've done this. I've been around enough people. And how do we know this? Parsha Haman. Parsha Haman is a source for money. Parsha Haman says that all the tzaddikim, the man came straight to the door. All the other people, they had to gather around, run around, look for, and for it. And even when they got it, it got it spoiled. So Parsha Haman is telling you the law of attraction. When you have trust in God and you do the right thing, things come to you. When we lose trust in our Creator, we fall below that lever, that, that level. We start having worry, anxiety. Things run away from us. This is why the Gemara tells you exactly. When you're running out of money, give charity. Give charity. When you're running out of money, 
Because right now you're attracting fear. You're attracting nothing but the opposite of blessing. So anything really pretty much the same thing. Same thing as, as love, love life. For guys specifically. The more you're careful on maintaining your, your looking for your soulmate, the more your soulmate comes to you. That means you have to do a lot of spiritual cleansing. Lesson 67, black and white. Rabbi Nachman says you lose your zivug if you get too physical. So the more spiritual you get, the more your soulmate comes to you. The more physical we get, the more your soulmate runs away from you. Pretty much the same thing. It's either you're attracting her or you're pushing her away. It's nothing to do with her. It's nothing to do with her. It's you. You have to take 100% responsibility because the, Gemar, the Zohar says it clearly. The man is either, she goes off the derech, towards her or away from her. It's a direct relationship with our spiritual state. This is why we speak about the 40-day challenge so much, how important it is that once you get cleansed, spiritually cleansed, and I can't tell you how many people I get constant emails. I did the 40-day challenge. You wouldn't believe I met, I met somebody. Of course you're going to meet somebody. Uh, I did the 40-day challenge. My mazal is getting better. I attracted a job. Yes, we know that. That's what happens. It's, it's all being held in escrow waiting for you. All of these blessings are waiting for us. We just need to open up our hands and create a vessel for it. That is the, and Hashem wants to give us more than we can receive. Pretty much. He wants to give you more than you want to receive. Believe it or not, it hurts Him not to give it to you. This is why a lot of our prayers are always asking for Hashem for His sake. Because He wants to give more than we want to receive. So if we're, at, if we're dealing with something, if we're, I can almost guarantee, I can almost guarantee the people that are struggling with Parnassah, with, with Shalom Bayit, with, 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 it, they don't have a morning routine. They wake up to worries. They wake up to anxieties. They don't have any direction in this area. They're not cutting the pattern. They're waking up with yesterday's headache and they're continuing that loop. And it's pretty much, this is where we, the morning is so important because the morning is where we have to interrupt the pattern. If we have a negative thought pattern, the morning is a great way to already start with a new pattern. Sometimes in life you can't fix an old road. It's going to be a dead end. It is what it is. We don't need to fix dead ends. We just need to create new roads. This is the concept of Hasidut. You don't need to fix everything that's broken. Nobody's telling you that. All our sages are telling us, create a new road. Don't, don't fix everything. We always think we're overwhelmed sometimes trying to fix the past. Who's telling you to fix the past? Create a new road. This is exactly, create a new road of gratitude. Create a new road of feeling abundant. And then things come to you. I can't stress this enough. Because the always, you have to understand, the ego's job is always to look outward and to say there's a problem outward. The soul says, I'm not attracting something for a reason. Why am I not attracting that? What's causing me not to attract my zivug, my parnasa, etc.? There's an inward issue. The soul takes responsibility for the situation. The ego says it's the problem out there. There's no jobs in Miami. Really? People tell you, there's no job. Really? You're in the biggest opportunity right now. What are you talking about? There's no employees in Miami. I mean, people tell me, there's no jobs in Miami. No, there's no employees in Miami. Got it the other way around. Opposite. There's no singles in Miami. There's no... What do you expect to get when you, with that mindset? That is, a, that, is a, that is an attitude of saying, the outside needs to fix, and then I will attract. Already you lost. Anytime you look outwards, already it's an arrogant form because you're saying something else outside is broken, but I'm good. I am good. And that's the, one of the... This is what really, really smacked me when I was going through challenges. Because it's not... <laughs> if you're going to the same bar and you keep on getting into a fight, <laughs> it's not the bar. <laughs> it's not the bar. It's not the bar. If every place you're going to a bar, you keep on getting into a fight, you have to tell God, listen, maybe it's something in you. And that's the same thing in life. And this is why Hashem teaches us the same lesson over and over again. Because he, max, he makes us maximize to get enough pain in something so that we're forced to deal with the issue. 
forced to deal with the issue. And this is something where it, it, it hurts. Sometimes it hurts to deal with this. But any time you look outwards, forget it. You're already on the wrong path. Like I had a conversation today, literally after the class I did on the judgment, judgment blocks love. And the guy's basically talking how much his, his future potential wife is not, doesn't have empathy for him, she's not as nice to him, etc. She's saying she's lacking empathy. But, and she's, he's upset that she's, she's not lacking empathy for him. But meanwhile, she was, poor girl, she got divorced. She can't have kids. And she got cheated on. He has to have empathy for her. But he's saying she's not nice to me. Do you understand? He can't even see beyond, wow, I never thought of it like that. Are you a woman? Can, can you have kids? You know how hard it is for a woman not to have kids? You know how hard that is? Or we'll go through a relationship that you got cheated on? That's a very tough thing to go through. And she's saying, you're not, she's not nice to him. So what happens, just like when we don't feel empathy, because we're lacking it. Exactly what the Baal Shem Tov says. You know why? It's another problem in relationships, the same thing. We want love, but we put judgment first. So today's class. You can't, the Baal Shem Tov says black and white. How can you love somebody you're judging? How can you love somebody you're judging? But when we don't feel good about ourselves, what do we do? We judge. Right? We judge. How could we expect love? And say we're not getting love. That's what Baal Shem Tov says. How can you love somebody you judge? Wow. It was like black and white. Black and white. You can't love somebody you judge. Period. You want to start having love? Drop the judgment. You'll see the good points in that person. And think about it in our marriages. When, when things are not uh, rocky, it's because judgment is before love. So when we're judging, what happens when we're judging? We're in a very low, we're angry. We're in a consciousness of 150. So what happens? We are, we're, we're very aggressive, we start judging, we're vengeful. But if you start, imagine going from anger to forgiveness and for love and understanding. You go from negative 150 to 500 vibration. Your energy level. What he's referring to here is this is your energy and your vibrational level. You understand? And usually you'll attract people on your level. You understand? You'll always usually attract people on the same, con- on the same consciousness as you. So as we get higher in our consciousness, we attract better relationships, better people, etc. Rabbi Nachman says it black and white. That Parnasa and Shalom Bayit are based on quality of tefillah, quality of prayer. When you're in a higher consciousness, your prayer is completely different. You attract better people also, which is another thing we need to understand. So remember, anytime we're looking outwards, it's really a sign that we are holding in something we don't like. And we're projecting that image onto others. And this is why you need that, you need a time to contemplate and to see why is this bothering me so much? Why am I so bothered by that person? Why am I judging that person so much? Especially if that person is my wife. What's, that's not going to bring me any shalom bayit. Who's, whoever has shalom bayit with judgment? Nobody. Judgment turns into resentment. Judgment doesn't turn into love. Judgment turns into resentment. Somebody has to make that move and, and drop the judgment and increase love. And you know what happens? What, a magical thing happens. When you start doing that, then you get the same vibrancy in heaven. They drop the judgment on you and they only love you. So it's pretty much the law of attraction also in heaven. We almost attract exactly what we, how we treat people. The way we treat people below is exactly how our creator treats us above. So when you have a tough day, it's not a, it's not a time to be depressed, it's not a time to be sad, it's a time to be curious of why I'm so bothered. What triggered me about that person that tr- bothered me? What about that person that triggered me? Not that person's that, that person's that. What, how, why was I so triggered that day about that person? Why did my wife's comment trigger me so much? Why did that person's comment trigger me? Get curious about that trigger and then take action. And ask yourself, what are you holding in there? Big difference. This is humility. When you do this, you start taking accountability 
and you recognize it's an, not an outward issue, it's an inward issue. It's the soul looking, the soul looks 100% inward. And we're not asking to incriminate ourselves, you're not smart enough, you, you keep on blowing it, you're so negative. We're just asking for information. I'm asking for information on why I was so bothered today at 3 o'clock. Why was I so bothered? That's different. That's how you do proper tshuva. You don't want to incriminate yourself because you have to judge yourself favorably too. <laughs> You have to judge yourself favorably too. So you always want to have compassion on yourself and say, okay, what, what went wrong in that person? What went wrong in that relationship? What's, wrong, what's, what's going wrong in my dating? Why is my dating going south all the time? What's happening that I get these relationships start fizzling out in a couple months? Miami's catching the LA wave maybe. You know, three months, I think three months and you're out in LA. Miami's catching that wave over here. But what's happening after three months? Maybe I'm looking for too much excitement. Maybe I just want to fall in love and not stand in love. These are the real questions you have to ask yourself. And this will give you at least dot. At least you'll give you dot. And this, okay, I get it. I know what I need to fix. And Rabbi Nachman says, and the Gemara says it beautifully. Once a person has dot, mercy is awakened for him. The Gemara says, once a person has dot, he recognizes himself, he does the proper introspection, Mercy is awakened for him, and you, he, he opens up your mind because you see you're looking inward. Very, very important concept. Very, very important concept. You have to stand in love. Falling in love. Anybody can fall in love. People in my rehab fall in love in five minutes. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're in love. Sometimes we're using dating as a drug. No, it's a relationship. It's a long term. It's a marathon. You don't run too quick. So it's a process. That's another thing. Another reason, another sign you're in a good soul state is if you start enjoying the process. Seeking the prize is also too much. It's also too much. Too much, you know, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself. And that also is going to not allow you to attract what you want because you're too, you're too obsessed with the process. We're too obsessed with the prize. We need to start joining the process, which is another very, very important thing. But remember, as when you have trust, you have patience. Trust gives you patience. No trust, opposite. And Rabbi Nachman says it very clearly in Lesson 87. He says, the major cause of suffering today is when we're trying to rush the hour. Rushing the hour is one of the major causes of suffering today. You're trying to come out premature. If a, if a mother had a child and she was only six months, the child was six months, the mother says, I want to get this baby out. You would tell the mother, you're out of your mind. You can hurt the child if he's premature. He has to stay nine months. I don't care how much it hurts you. You have to stay nine months. It's good for you and it's good for the child. Premature things, Rabbi Nachman calls it as eating Unripe fruits. Eating unripe fruits is trying to take something before the right time. Remember that concept. But that's also, when we're in a hurry, it's also because we're in desire mode. We're in a very low consciousness of 125. Of always, always running, running, desire, desire, desire. Always running after things. That's not a good sign. That's not a sign of building a Kaylee. That's a sign of running after light without building a Kaylee. Remember the difference. We want, we, we, we want to create the Kaylee, create the vessel, not run after light. Our Creator, Lesson 172, Rabbi Nachman says it very clearly, our Creator wants us to give us, but He only wants to give, He can give it to you based on what you can handle. If you can't handle too much, He gives you too much, at the wrong time, it's actually a punishment. People get married when they're not ready. They get divorced. That's not a, it's not a blessing. It's not a blessing. It's a, it becomes a, a lesson in life. No? It's not always the right time. There has to be a time. And this is where we have to recognize there's a process. The process is, I need to be coming. And this is very, very important. Trusting the process versus rushing the process. The ego is also always drawn to lust. 
This is a, one of the biggest Yetzirahs, drawn to lust. The soul is drawn to love. So one of the things that go wrong in relationship, when they're focusing too much on the lust and not enough on the love. And the lust gets in, in, gets in the way of the love. So this is where we have to really, really, really be very careful not to get to cool off your impulses and heat up your vision. You're dating somebody, cool off the impulses. Heat up your vision. The more you cool off your impulses, the more your vision, the better your vision looks. The less we cool off, our, when we're impulsive, the vision looks terrible. So we have to ask ourselves, with anything in life, to the degree that they cool off our impulses, that is the degree that our vision is heated. And that's where self-esteem comes in. When we have healthy self-esteem, we look for the bigger picture. We don't want the short-term mindset, etc. It's very, very, very important, a very important concept. One of the things that you know, a way that you know, because this is, remember, this is all energy. How do you know you're, you're doing the right thing? Very simple. If you feel lighter, if something feels very heavy to you, there's a problem. By the, 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 anything you feel heavy, if it's too heavy, there's a problem. Heavy means that your relationship with it, it's too much of an expectation, or you're doing it for interest, such as prayer, such as learning, such as giving charity. If the heaviness is tied to it, already it's a bad sign. This is why holding a grudge is very heavy, but forgiving is very light. When you forgive, it's like you, you, you like let go so much, but holding a grudge is very heavy. So think about something. If something feels heavy, there's a chance something is wrong. <clears throat> Heaviness is a sign of suppression of energy. Something being light is a sign that you're going in the right way. Because as we go through the map, and as we go through consciousness, the energy level changes. That means as you start growing spiritually, automatically you will have more energy. Energy comes when you start dropping certain belief systems. Imagine your life if you never worried again. You think you would have more energy? Absolutely. Neg negativity, negativities, the, the sources say, blocks 50% of your muscles. It uses 50% of your muscle growth because it's just how much negativity holds. So negativity is also a sign that we're holding, too, we're holding too much. So this is where you really have to ask yourself, where am I in this chart? Where am I? Where's, what's the main emotion that I have? And then you have to work through it. And you have to ask yourself, okay, why am I so, why am I so fearful? Why am I? Why am I living with so much fear? What's causing it like that? Maybe it's because I grew up like that as a child. Maybe because I thought, you know, my, my mother says things have to be hard in order to make money. Or maybe I, I have a belief system that I'm not entitled to the money. This is why I have to worry if it goes out of me. You understand? We always have to ask ourselves, if we're living in a certain vibration, this is all I'm going to attract. You ever hear of the store five below? All you're going to see is things that are five or below. That's it. That's the name of the store. Five below. There's no hundred below, it's five below. That's where you are. Five or below. Same concept. My kids are, I want to go to five below. I want to, I'm like, wow, I, that's a consciousness thing. Five or below. You're not getting more than five or below. If you live in five below, that's what you get. That's what you get. But when you vibrate on love and you start vibrating on trust, you know what happens? You start releasing things. You start seeing things as, okay, I accept things. Things are besimcha, and then you start getting opportunities. We have to recognize that. I know it's hard because most people, they want to see it to believe it. And they're afraid to put in the work because if they put in the work, how about if it doesn't work out? That itself is a problem. You understand? Most of the problems today are, I know what to do, but I'm afraid if I do it, it's not going to work out, and now I'm left with nothing. This is probably one of the major reasons why most addicts don't want to get clean because they're afraid they'll never be happy again. In their minds, they don't recognize that's what's putting you as a prisoner. 
That's taking away your happiness. When you really go into recovery, you're going to become much happier. Because you're going to grow and you're going to give and you're going to, and you're going to do the steps. It's going to change the way you think. But they say, what? I'm going to stop using now? My life is going to be over. Your life is over right now. But to them, their mindset is, I'm, never, I'm going to lose my ability to get high. That's it. What else do I have to live for? What would you say to somebody like that? Trust me. Let go. Nullify yourself. Surrender. The same thing also here. Rabbi Nachman says many times people are afraid to get to start praying. Many people are start afraid to go all in and to really trust because we're so obsessed with control. We don't like to lose control whatsoever. And to the extent that we don't like to lose control is that's the extent that we don't allow a creator in our lives. The extent that we control is the extent that we don't allow our creator in our lives. And control is really one of the biggest causes of chaos. And this is all rooted in Chava, of seeking control. And the ultimate, the ultimate remedy for that is humility. is to give up control to your creator. And the only reason why we control in the first thing is because we have fear. That is why people control things. You're in controlling relationships, the guy has fear. He's afraid you're going you're gonna to leave him. You're, 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 you start controlling, uh, start getting angry about money, you're afraid you're going to lose it. But you're going to end up losing it because it's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Do you understand? So what's stopping you from allow- going all in is going to end up sabotaging you for that. And then this is what happens in life where we get, we get frustrated about you know, constantly doing the same thing the same thing over and over. So this is where Rabbi Nachman says the only way to really go from level to level is through the concept called bittel, which means surrender. Nullify yourself. Work on each midah that you have until you completely cancel it out. Whatever, no, whatever thing you have, for example, if your major fear is, fr- is fear, you need to work on bitachon, learn about bitachon, talk about bitachon, take action like a person would trust, do whatever you can to do is be obsessed with, with trusting in Hashem, and that's how you can undo a bad attribute. Because sometimes there's a theory that instead of attacking the problem, build enough strength in the opposite of it, and that will eventually tackle it. Our sages say it takes 40 days to break a habit. A person who has a habit of not waking up in the morning. Let's say he doesn't want to wake up in the morning. He's, he's, he's unhappy, he's lazy, etc. Our sages say go 40 days in a row with zealous. And that 40 day can create a new habit that will eventually overcome that habit. So we have to ask ourselves what area in our lives we really, 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 really um, have an issue with. Such my issue a long time ago was taking things personal. That was a really hard issue for me. And I worked so hard on that until I canceled it out completely. Not completely, but I'm pretty much there. Where I really canceled it out and I got so deep into it that that helped me so much because I didn't take failure personal. I didn't take people's comments personal. I was able to go be very resilient. But until then, that was my weakest spot, was taking things personal, caring about what people say. It was, the weak, it was the weakest area that gave me the most amount of pain. So I said, I need to do whatever I need to do to work on this, asking Hashem, please Hashem, please help me not take things personal. Please let me make myself like nothing. This is why you hear all the time in the classes, koach ma, ma, ma is what? Where am I? Ma hayenu. Ma is connecting to humility. We speak about that all the time. Because through talking about Ma, how could you take things personal? Can't take things personal. Only if you make it about you. So that was my particular problem. And then once that, 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 that removed so many blocks, and that got me into such a higher consciousness, where I was able to grow so much more because of that blockage. But that blockage was there. And, you, you, and we all have that blockage in our area of our lives but if you don't work on it, it works you. Whatever you don't work on, it ends up working you. And this is what you have to understand. What, am I, what is my fear? Where it could be a person could have too much pride, um, where he has to constantly put people down, where he has to feel like he's better than others. 
You know, that could be the issue. It could be, God forbid, uh, you know, getting over the past, grief, not being able to overcome what happened in life. You know, we can't change the past, but we can change our perspective of the past. Basically, you have to recognize that consciousness on that level is blocking you from all of this blessing. That means all you really have to do is fix this, and then automatically blessings come to you in different ways. You know, there was a study the other day asking, just a, a dating thing, you know, how many, what would require a guy to ask on three dates? On what, how, why would you ask another girl out on a date? She says, she has to be cute, she has to be nice, and she has to be kind. They ask girls, what would you get, what, would, what, how would, what, what qualities do you need to go out with a guy again? The guy said three things, the girl said 300 things. <laughs> They said 300 things. The guy, three things. Cute, nice, kind. That's all I need. She, 300 things. 300 things. So you got to work on your expectations. Constant, all these expectations coming in, with expectations, judgments, etc. That's a problem. That's a problem. So that could, that could be the problem. Do you understand? Too much, needing too much. Needing too much in life. And that could be the problem. That could be the blockage. And, that, and that's what we have to really, really see. This is exactly what, what you're trying to do. You're really, really trying to resonate on where you are, and then you've got to drop, drop that, change that, bitzel yourself in that area, and automatically you're go, you'll go up to another one. It's not that they go away. A person all of a sudden with, after he works on his anger, the next thing that's going to come up is his pride. It's not like we go from uh, anger to uh, love in one shot. It's because as we, as we grow in our lives, we end up creating more layers and layers and layers. And the more layers, the less we can see. These are the layers. This is what you're saying, layers. And every single layer that we see, every single energy level, is basically the emotion that's tied to that thing. For example, a person that lives on, if his consciousness is merciful, and he lives at a level of acceptance, of course he's going to forgive easy. Because he's worked on so he worked on himself so much that for him it's easy to forgive because he, 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 he lives there. But if you tell a guy to forgive when his, uh, you know when he's living in anger, tell an angry person to forgive somebody. What is he going to say? Why should I forgive them? They need to apologize to me to me. What do, why would two people have a different reaction to, a, to the same situation? Because one person lives in a consciousness of anger. Another person lives in a consciousness of wisdom and, and merciful and acceptance. So his emotion is forgiveness. Forgiveness is 350. Anger is 150. Period. That's all it is. And that's how we see the world. This is exactly. So when we're angry, what do you think you're going to attract? More things to be angry about. Red lights will bother you. This will bother you. Not everybody's bothered by a red light. Not everybody's bothered by a TV show. Not everybody's bothered by getting the wrong coffee at Starbucks. Not everybody loses and yells at the, at the barista, whatever she's called. Not everybody does that. Some say, okay, it's okay. She gave me the wrong coffee. So if we don't, wa- if we don't walk around and recognizing where we are, we can't change it. That's really the key. And when you're in fear, you're always going to think, be paranoid. How do, how do I know they really want to be with me? Maybe they're dating somebody else. How do I know it's going to work out? I saw something. You know what? Let me end it before I get hurt. Why were you thinking like that? Why would you think like that? Because you had a relationship three years ago that you haven't let go. And that relationship is now manifesting three years later with a new person. So you really have to recognize how much this affects you. How much this affects you. You see this with employees, you see this with people. If you do not do the work, you get the same results because this is exactly the energy you attract. And that will never change unless we get to the different level. In anger, you're always going to see, you know, why is that person not nicer to me? How come I got them a nicer gift than they did? Everything will get you angry. 
it doesn't take much to, to piss a person off who's, who's holding anger. Everything will be an issue in their lives. Everything. Why did you give me this cup? Are you sure it's Mevushal? Maybe you should have got me that. Everything becomes a problem. They have a problem for every solution. A problem for every solution. You ever meet people like that? It's not because of what's happening external. It's what's hap- what they're holding internal. So this is why Rabbi Nachman says you have to spend 30 minutes a day <laughs> working on this midah like it's taking away all your blessings or whatever midah you're working on until you track, until you get to above 200. Once you get to 200, you start developing courage. That's when you start attracting. That's when you start having courage. That's when you start taking action. That's when you start getting moment- momentum. But when we hear, you know, sometimes, this is why Rabbi Nachman says that prayer gives you energy. And most people associate prayer as something of a depletion of energy. Correct? Most people are not saying, I want to go pray to get energy. No, I want to go do something else to get energy. They don't associate prayer as energy. They're asking you really, what synagogue is the quickest one to get the hell out of there? That's what they're really asking. How quick is that one? Where is this one? We, they want to be done with it. And Rabbi Nachman is telling us the reason why we feel so exhausted when we pray is exactly the reason why we need to pray. Do you understand? <laughs> because we feel so agitated when we pray, it's because we're holding so much in that we need prayer to help us feel better. So a good indication that you, that you feel better is after you pray. Good indication is you feel, you feel better. You feel lighter. Because you unloaded, you released, you came to your creator with your worry, etc. But this is really the law of attraction. The law of attraction, people on joy and people in love, they attract opportunities, they attract everything. They just, love comes to them. They don't even need to get it. People say, wow, what energy level that person had. Wow, I'm sorry, I love that person's energy level. They come to you. You don't have to do anything. And the same thing, the opposite. When we're in a very low energy level, we always need more people to like us. That's why our sages say that when a person runs after kavod, kavod runs away, people run away after him. The more you run for kavod, the more people run away from you. The more you look for validation, the less people want to give it to you. This is where you hear people, I'm always getting insulted all the time. How come I got insulted? I'm getting, today I got insulted five times. In Miami? I understand in New York. Miami you got insulted five times? That's because you're too self-centered. That's teaching you you're too self-centered. It's teaching you you're, whole, you're vibrating a very low frequency. This is why you're making everything about you. You're looking for too much kavod. You understand? Opposite. So now when you don't get... The, when, when, when a person's walking around and he feels happy, he doesn't need, care what people say about him. He doesn't care because he's not living there. It's occasional, occasional that we do get in a bad mood and we fall below this level. That's okay if it happens occasionally. What I'm talking about is there's a dominant, there's a dominant element that you're living in, in that area. And I promise you, anything under 170, all people at 175, they're all running after things. They're all running after things at 175. People with anger, are, are, they want to get revenge to say, look, I'm right. They're all running after things. People on a higher frequency, things are coming to them. The lower level is the soul, is the, is the ego. The higher level is the soul. That is pretty much it. The lower level is the soul. So you get tremendous. People think also, well, what am I going to put all this effort in? How much? Uh, I, can't, I don't have five minutes to pray. I don't have five minutes to work on myself. Then how are you going to work on something that's bothering you? You understand? If you don't have five minutes, there's a great line that says, if you don't have five minutes to meditate, you need two hours to meditate. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have time. That's not an answer anymore. I don't have time. Because if I, if I have an anger issue, I better make time. Because that's going to be the rest of my life is going to be a life full of unfit expectations. And always being upset and always blaming people for getting me angry. And, and complaining that traffic is no good. And complaining that this guy doesn't do that for me. It's always going to be like that. 
the channel never changes. Because the heaven will only show you what you got, what you're holding. When you see this, it's so obvious. When you see this, it's so obvious. It's black and white. You make decisions. You can hire people. You know who you're dating, you know, etc. I'm not telling you to judge, but you feel the difference in the energy level of that person as soon as he walks into the room, around you, and you have to pray for them because this itself is a prison. Being stuck in something and not working on it, not realizing you have an issue, that itself is the worst prison of them all because you're really stuck there. You don't even recognize that. So my advice first is to dedicate a specific amount of time to, to, to work on this, to work on nullifying yourself in each one. Forget about chasing, forget about asking for, because you, you can't, unless you remove the blockage, you can't, what, if God gives you more money when you're angry, it's a punishment. All you do is you're going to be upset about more, more losses. What's the point? What's the point of giving somebody, or if a person has a lust issue, what's the point of giving him more more things to be lustful about. You understand? It would be cruelty. So this is exactly why we have to work on this. So I would recommend, Rabbi Rush says 30 minutes a day. I would recommend 15 to 30 minutes a day. We're just working on removing the particular thing that's bothering you. And you'll know this based on your consciousness. And as you go and figure this out, and as you continue to nullify yourself, and you ask Hashem for help, Gemara says it clearly. Everybody has the Yetzirah, and if it wasn't for God helping him, he would never be able to beat it. So you have to ask for help. You, not only do you have to learn about it, but you, ask, you have to ask your Creator to help you. You have to ask you. Rav Nachman had an anger issue one time, and he fought it. He had an anger issue. He worked on it. And then you have to ask yourself also, first pray for it, and second ask yourself, what is my life going to look like in another five years if I don't work on this issue? <laughs> then that should wake you up. That means, yes, it might be painful to deal with this issue. It might be painful to deal with, you know, uh, a bad divorce or anger issues that we've had in the past that are making us. Remember, it's usually the past that's forming our personality. So then we have to ask ourselves, if I don't let go, I can't get higher on the scale. And if I can't get higher on the scale... I'm not going to attract anything but the same thing that I'm constantly attracting. And this gives us enough leverage to have clarity on what we need to talk about. And this is when, when you pray for something, Hashem takes away that from you. He can take away anger from you. He can take it away from you. He can take away a bad midah from you. You have to ask for it. You have to ask for it constantly, spiritually. And as you let go, as you, continue, as you grow spiritually, you'll attract much more you have better relationships because when you change your relationship with God, God changes your relationship with people. Period. Period. Everybody can attest to that. But as they become, they became better, their relationships completely changed. You will not have the same relationships. And the same thing, financially, you'll be able to go into a deal, make decisions, and trust. And you will not sabotage yourself by constantly worrying whether it's going to work out whether it's not, we're going to work out. You're going to say, through trust, I attract. Through fear, I push, push out. You'll have better relationship with your kids. Because if you live in a, in a, in a, if you live in a, in a harmonious stage, you, you're not going to control your kids. You're not going to control everybody. I need you to do it this way. You'll drop the judgment and increase the love. Everything will change about you. This is the benefits of really going into Bittal. Is you, you change everything. Everything changes in your life across the board. More, more success, better relationships, more fulfillment, because you start affecting people instead of infecting people. <laughs> your soul vibrates. Your neshama vibrates into the world, and you can make such a different impact in life. Anybody have any questions so far? Anybody have any questions? Does anybody know what bitl means? Bitl means surrender to that midah means to surrender to that. Accept you have it. Ask your Creator to take it away from you. Same thing as that. Take it away from you. That's what you need to ask Him. Take it away. But you need to dedicate time. But first you need to label it. You need to label it, etc. And everything else, like I said, across the board, 
you will be happier because you will have better relationships. And Shalom Bayit, if you live in, 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 in acceptance and forgiveness, you think it's going to be hard for you to let go of things? No, easy. When you live in a harmonious and merciful state, you recognize that person's having a rough day. They didn't say it to me purposely. Let me let it go. You'll let go very easy. You won't take it to heart. But you tell an angry person to have Shalom Bayit to let it go, it's going to be a, why should I let it go? They should let it go. But I'm trying to explain to you that Shalom Bay brings Parnassah for both of you. I don't care. I'd rather be right than rather be in love. But opposite. person who's merciful says, I'd rather be in love than be right. Opposite. So this is a consciousness thing. This is a consciousness. It's the way we view the world and etc. The more we learn, the more we let go, etc. And that is really the law of attraction. Yes. Well, we spoke about, that's Lakute Maharan. Lakute Maharan. But this is why Rav Natan said it in his book called um, Rabbi Rush says 198 miracles of people said thank you. He takes this concept by Rav Nachman says when a person says thank you for all his salvations, the salvations are nullified from him. That means if you thank Hashem for your problems, the problem goes away. Not only does it turn you, go away, but it turns into an opportunity. Where does he get that concept? Because if you're living in, if you think your creator loves you, and he only wants the best for you, then you could say thank you. And recognize it's a cleansing, and then the blessings come. But how could you say thank you if you're angry? You're going to say, my creator's unfair. He's out to get me. He's punishing me. How could I thank him? So that's why he says, if you just say the words and you don't mean the words, it doesn't work. We can get a parrot here to say thank you also. We, can, we don't mean it. We don't mean it because inside, what we're holding inside is not what's matching outside. I'm not telling you you're not going to get occasionally upset. You're going to get angry here. But you're not going to live there. You're a human being. You're not going to live there. You're not going to live in this frequency. But ultimately, when you reach to a point where Rav Natan says, will you say thank you? And you're grateful for everything and you see everything as one? You don't even need to pray. How do you like that? You don't need to pray. You don't need to pray for things. No need. Because you, you hit the climage of love. You see everything as love. Then things come to you. Because you see the big picture. You don't see it as two. We don't see a separation that God is uh, good to me one day and God's bad to me one day. You see God is one. That's the oneness that attracts all the blessings. That's the oneness that we're connecting to. The oneness, seeing everything as one. No matter what happens to you, it's all love. Then blessings come to you. Then, etc. This is why, and when you, again, when you live on love, period, you give love, your creator gives you more love. Same thing. The good thing is what you're holding inside is the same way heaven treats you. And then you don't even need to buy books on law of attraction. You don't even need to, you don't need to buy them. Because you already know how to get there. You know how to get there. You know how to climb the ladder. What do I need to read the book? I, I'm, I'm already there. I'm already attracting. God forbid you won't be jealous of people. Because you recognize jealousy is only because I have, a, I have pride. It's a very low frequency. You're not, people, you don't have to remind people to be jealous. What are you talking about? Jealous? Why would I be jealous? I have trust in God. Why would I be jealous? It doesn't make sense. Lush and hara? Why would I talk Lush and hara about a person? Why would I do these behaviors? It's not me. It's not me. So spend a lot of time getting rid of the blockages, getting rid of the programs. Whatever relationships were there, were not there, let them go because they're not serving you anymore because they're stopping you from rising to different levels. This is exactly what Joe Dispenza says. Do not let your personality become your personal reality. Don't let your personality become your personal reality. You understand? Or don't let, sorry, don't let your personal reality become your personality. Opposite. Don't let what happened to you become who you are. Let your personality they dictate your personal reality. Let your personality see the, change the world. When you have a different personality, things look, look completely different out there, etc. versus this. And this is literally the key to everything. <laughs> it's the key to everything. 
It's really work on internal change. Forget the out, uh, external change. Forget about the process. Am I attracting yet? Let go. Let go. Let go of expectations. Let go and just vibrate on love and you will attract everything you'll see. And I've, this is exactly the same formula, Baruch Hashem, that I've used. And it's worked. And any time that I fall below that level, right away, I try to get right back up there. But if you don't have a morning routine, if you do not have a morning routine, just like if you don't work out every, every day, you cannot expect to be in shape. Because as we go through life, we accumulate more, we hold on to more, and it makes it much harder to get the flow going. So now you should associate prayer as something uplifting, as something where you can release negative energy, as something where you can start attracting. So I hope this was, cl- I hope it's clarified the Jewish version of the law of attraction, not that I'm angry and I want to meditate on a Ferrari so I can make my, my partner feel, feel like crap and feel better than him. <laughs> That's not what it was intended for. Or I can, all of a sudden, I broke up with my girlfriend so I can go meditate on, on higher, getting with a prettier girl so I can make her jealous. That's ego. That's not the decision from the soul. That's just to get her back. That's a very, that's a very low conscious decision. That's a decision that's not going to end up leading to much. Because you're doing, you're doing it because you want to make somebody feel bad so you can feel good. Already you know that's, that's not going to last. All right? Have a great day, guys. Have a good night.